And so we have a couple of questions for you being the expert in social media and maybe you have a couple of questions for us. Where would you like to start? Sure. Well, let me start by turning on the recorder here because uh, I wasn't recording and I want to get that going so we get it just right. Uh, and are you using a call recorder? I'm using call recorder for Skype. Yep. Excellent. I'm using uh, ScreenFlow and it looks like it is coming through right about now. Perfect. So there we go. Let me click over here on this and there we are. <laughs> Uh, and how's my voice coming through now? Perfect. Wonderful. Perfect. Alrighty. Sounds great. Then, then we're ready to roll. And uh, did you want to, uh, let's see, do a countdown or something so we can uh, know when we'll start? Let's just go now. Okay. <laughs> well, Terry, you know what? Um, Thanks for being here and, you know, had a uh, conversation scheduled today and then when we spoke this morning, it was kind of, well, why don't we turn it into Skype and turn it into some product and to, to give people something that um, they can now benefit from. And Absolutely. You, with Clout Matters, your, your book, um, you dive into social media endlessly and, and it's a fantastic book. But well, thank you. there was a couple of things that immediately come to mind when it comes to like the Facebooks, the Twitters, the Pinterests and all this kind of stuff. And I guess the first portion is, you know, there's so much, so many people, I guess, not so much, but so many people today saying, you know, okay, well, I got 100,000 Facebook followers like this and I got 50,000 Facebook followers like this. I mean, uh, Brennan Bouchard, the, his launch is just going on now for Total Product Blueprint. And one of the key portions of the video was, you know, this is how I got 340,000 people to like me on Facebook. And we know social media is a big thing, but you know what, the little conversations that a lot of people have in their head, you know, it's just nobody's liking my page. You know, those little conversations that come in your head after five people see your post, but the last post you had like 150 people see it. So. What can we do? Is there anything or is each individual business person different? Or have you seen some strategies that, that really if we all follow, at least we can start raising our clout score and stop having these negative little conversations that we don't know Facebook, we can't do it, we don't know Twitter. Yeah, it's very important to realize the importance of social media first, and it's a way of connecting with other people and engaging with them. That's a key term. We talk about that in the book a lot, that it's really important not to just blast out a message. I mean, that's, you know, how 19th century, you know, or late 20th century even, you know, blasting out a message. Instead, you engage with people. And I think what you want is quality response from people. To have a certain amount of followers, that's good. And being able to influence them, yes, that's good. And the way to do it and the way your clout score really is going to be determined is not by how many followers you have. It's not by how many friends you have on Facebook. What really matters is how many people are engaging with you based on what you've done to engage with them. So if they respond to you, then it's good. And the beautiful thing about clout is it's really a good measuring stick. It's just a way to say, okay, how am I doing? In the book, we talk about it as more like a BMI, the body mass index. You know, let's say you got somebody who's 500 pounds and they're smoking 14 packs of cigarettes a day and they drink three gallons of Jack Daniels a day. I'm no medical doctor, but I'm thinking that's not a good thing. You know, they go to the doctor, they don't, they're not going to say, doctor, I really need a better BMI. You know, BMI is part of it, but it's like, hey, you need to get in better shape. And then if you do that, you stop eating certain things, you stop putting things in your body you shouldn't, you exercise moderately with proper care and health regard from a professional, then you're going to see your BMI improve. But the goal is doing things better with your body. Well, the same thing applies in social media. If you do the things that help you to become a better social media citizen, that's important. And then you'll do that. You're going to engage with people. They're going to respond to you. They're going to talk to you. And what you'll want to do is keep in mind as you do that, your clout score will improve. And that's what uh, really matters. 
So uh, you want to make sure that you uh, uh, get that uh, going and you'll be able to stay in touch with people. Now, there's certain things you can do that will be better than others. And that, again, is where clout comes in. And so it's going to be different for each business. But if you go into clout and you click on the area of profiles, notice that it shows you some moments that you have. What those moments are are illustrations of what you have done, say, for instance, in Facebook or in Twitter where it generated a lot of response. And clout will show you how much response you got and what really worked. So, Dan, you might have done this. I know I have many times. I send something out and I think, well, this is probably going to do really well. And maybe it does or doesn't. Or I think, boy, I don't know. I'm just going to throw this out and it does really well. You know, well, cloud gives you a way to determine what really does work because it's not important what I say. It's really important to what other people are saying, and that is the key. And that's where clout comes in as a good way to measure that and to make sure that you're doing the right thing. Cloud is a measuring tool that lets you see on a scale of 0 to 100 how much influence you're wielding on social media. They check 12 billion, that's what it be, but 12 billion data points every day, and they're looking at how many people interface with you and who is it that interfaces with you. So, for instance, if you could get someone that has a high clout score of 90 or above, you know, to interface with you a lot, well, that's going to really help your clout score. All you got to do is persuade, let's see, uh, like uh, Warren Buffett, Bill Gates, Barack Obama, and Oprah Winfrey to regularly communicate communicate with you on Facebook or Twitter, you'll be in really good shape, you know, but most of us don't have that. And so what you want to do is be able to connect with people in a meaningful, genuinely helpful way. So as people respond to you and talk with you, then your cloud score will go up. And so what does that mean? Well, a cloud score is important because many people who are in marketing, for instance, are now looking at that and paying attention to who is influential. Brands are paying attention to that to find out, okay, who is more influential here? Let's work with those people. And if they can target those who are more influential, hey, that'll be a better investment of their money. Like, for instance, Chevrolet wanted to reach people who were very instrumental and very influential in the environment and with um, uh, cars. They're interested in both of those and what they've been doing with social media, with uh, Facebook, with Twitter, etc. So they went to Clout. Clout matched them up with certain people. And then they gave these people the use of a Chevy Volt for a long weekend. You say, here, here you go. Here are the keys. Have a good time. And uh, uh, if you want to write anything about it, that's good. You're not required to, but just if you want to. Well, of course, most people did. They go, hey, I liked this part of the Chevy Volt. I liked that experience. It was good. I wish they'd do this in the future differently. And people saw it coming from not Chevy but coming from people that they admired and respected. And we know that that has a lot more punch. I mean, for instance, Dan, you and I are friends. We've known each other here. We're getting to know each other more and more over social media. If you say, Terry, I just tried this new widget and it really is good. Or, hey, I went and saw such and such a movie. It's really good. I would think, hey, if Dan likes that movie, then I'm more likely to go see it than if I just see yet another advertisement. So cloud is giving you a way, giving brands a way to really target on those that are most influential. And for those that are users, it gives you a ch chance to get what they call perks. Like the Chevy Volt for a weekend, you get that perk from someone because you're influential in this particular area. Yeah, and they actually do have a website, and that's Clout with a K, K-L-O-U-T. And you go there, you make sure you uh, are registered uh, and connected, really is the way we do it. Connect with your various platforms. If you are a Twitter user, by default, you have a Clout score. Now, you could unconnect that if you really wanted to because they're not going to force anyone to do it. But the best thing to do is connect your Twitter account, your Facebook account, your excuse me, your LinkedIn account, Foursquare. There's several tools and several connection points that they have. And as you connect those, then when there's activity uh, on those about you, people are mentioning you, that will help boost your clout score. Okay. Now, to um, draw something out for us here, Terry. Yeah, I see you got that nice fancy schmancy whiteboard there. This we actually, put that this actually is paint. Oh, and it is. Well, I like it. Yes, it my uh, my daughter is a, a big whiteboard fan, and right. you know, 
you could just never seem to get whiteboards big enough because it's like a garage. You know, you think a two car garage is big enough, then you get there and you, you know, you fill it up. So now you need a three car garage. You're going to fill that up. So yeah, I hear you. The, the whiteboards <laughs> never seem big enough. So we found actually for Christmas this year is we found a paint that goes over top. So all I've done is I've just put a border around mine to make it look more business like. But we actually painted an entire wall of my daughter's room in this so she can write all over her wall. So, oh, very nice. So it's the old disguise the wall with paint trick again. Yes, huh? <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, I mean, there's services out there like Hootsuite, um, uh, I, not Follow Me, there's another one, um, ITM, I believe, where you post on one and you create little things to go out to others. So, for example, it has one where you actually, you're creating what they call a recipe. So you post it on Facebook. It then goes to Twitter. Now from Twitter, you could tell it to go to Pinterest. And then from Pinterest, it can go to Google Plus. What's your thoughts on these types of services? Are they actually beneficial or do, do they seem fake, I guess, is the big word, Terry. You know, in my head, I say it makes sense. I can post one thing on Facebook. It then posts it on Twitter. From Twitter, it'll post it on Google+. Plus. It'll post it on Pinterest. It'll post it on my LinkedIn account. It'll do all that. But we also know Twitter has a character reference that you can't go past, whereas Facebook doesn't. So... Are these types of services really handy for us or should we, you know, it reminds me of, and it, you know, not to, ooh, squirrel here for a minute, but it reminds me of when video first became real popular. You know, and there was sites like TubeMogul where you would upload your video to TubeMogul and it would distribute it to all of these different sites. And then sites like Traffic Geyser came around. and. You know, when they first came around, the big thing was, yeah, use sites like TubeMogul and Traffic Geyser because you upload your video once and it gets distributed everywhere. But for sites like YouTube, go in and change the, you know, the description and make sure you put in your site tag. Is it the same scenario with these types of services? Well, the, you can do that, and it's physically possible to put it, for instance, as you have there, Facebook, and then it goes over to uh, Twitter, and then from there. But think about it. With Facebook, you've got more characters allowed, and so that means if you go over the 140-character limit of Twitter, but it, which is acceptable on Facebook, it's going to be truncated, and it's not going to look as good. But the even more important consideration is person who's using Facebook is in a different frame of mind than a person who uses Twitter. And they're in a different frame of mind of someone who's in Pinterest. And they're in a different frame of mind of someone who's using Google+. Each platform has its own style. In a way, it would be kind of like in the real world of going to your church or synagogue, and there's a certain way you behave, a certain way you do it. There's another way you behave if you go to the ball game. And you want to play there. And then there's another style that you use if you're in, uh, let's say, you're in a classroom. You go to a seminar or something. Each requires a unique kind of presentation. And I think this, that what we, that's what we have to do. You can send out some messages that are going to be similar. But it's best, always best, to tailor it toward that particular network and how people interact. Think about when you're on Twitter. You're not interacting in the same way that you would on Facebook. So with Facebook, you want to do it differently. Now, that means it takes more work. Yes, it also means you can't just blast, hate that word, blast, and get it out there to people. You've got to really connect with people as human beings. That's the key. And many people who are in marketing today want to think of it in terms of, I've got 500 billion followers, and I'm going to blast it out to them. And they try to make a big deal of how many followers they have, how many uh, people they have on the email list, those types of things. Well, that's not always working in social media. We want that intimate connection with people. So, okay, right off that fact then, what's the main mindset on Facebook? Facebook is you're interfacing with friends. Think of it like 
you're having friends over to your home for a casual party and you're talking occasionally from time to time. You might do something like uh, we do here in my place. We have a salon. A salon is like uh, they do in France where you'll have several people get together. We might have a visiting uh, expert on something, a friend, and we have this person sit down and she's going to talk to us you know, about different things that are happening. And it's a more interface and then we get up and the people move around and they talk. So that's what it's like. Now, Twitter is a little different. With Twitter, it's more like you're talking to someone, uh, you and I are sitting next to each other in a noisy bar, and I can have a brief conversation like, oh, where are you from? And you say, oh, Toronto. And I say, really? I'm from Orlando. Yeah, great. It, it's noisy. We can't have an in-depth conversation, but it is nice to know that. Or we might swap uh, cards, or we might say, hey, yeah, we'll have to get together next week when we can talk a little bit more. So it's short, brief conversations, 140 characters, and there's a discipline to that 140 characters that you have to do it within the protocol of that particular environment. And then when you look at Pinterest, hey, that's a group of people that largely are really into photography, really into pictures, and they're in a buying mode. They're often ready to buy something. And so it's a different environment than you have in Facebook or in Twitter. Then when you get over into Google Plus Hangout or Google Plus, uh, Google Plus is a more of a community and they call they use circles. So you're dealing with people that you know and you're not going to be as overt about sales where it could be okay in Pinterest to be there. So if you try to do the sa- wear the same outfit to uh, the beach – as you would to church or synagogue, as you would to school, not going to work. You want to wear different clothes, be dressed appropriately, and act accordingly based on the environment where you live. Fantastic. Okay. So then when we are looking to share our product or our our service, our product or service with people then, um, would you suggest we start is there a, a particular starting point depending on your product or service or is there a particular uh, ending point or is it really just, you know, figure out what's going to help people on Facebook, figure out what, how, it, how you're going to communicate to your friends, figure out how you're going to have a short, brief, but to the point conversation on Twitter, you know, figure out how you're going to maybe create a banner, a selling proposition banner on Pinterest and then Google Plus, maybe talk to your friends and ask your friends to shout out as well. Something yeah, like your, that? Yeah, your strategy is going to be how to reach a number of people and in business to be able to generate business, what's going to be the best. Now, each business will be different. If you're a hamburger stand that is appealing to people locally, then you're going to want a little different format. You're going to use uh, Facebook and there are places you're going to use Foursquare, things like that. Twitter could be used as well, um, but you're going to handle it differently than if you're, say, an accountant. And you want to generate business and show people what's going on there. Sometimes for many businesses, an integral component that will be included that you don't have right there is YouTube. YouTube with videos will be very important if you're going to show uh, new widgets that you've got that are unique and they're very visually oriented and they lend themselves to the motion of YouTube. That would be very important. Sometimes when you're going to show a lot of different uh, clothing styles or something, then if you're a clothing shop, Pinterest would be really good because Pinterest orients toward that kind of thing. So it depends on the business you're in. You've got to strategically think about it. But if you are that clothing shop, I could see a place for advertising and connecting with people on each of the platforms that you have there on the whiteboard. It's just they're going to be tactically different. And here's the important thing. It has to be contextually sensitive to where people are. Be very sensitive to the context. You communicate in a different way when you're taking the kids out to the Little League baseball game than you would if you were at a uh, even a family uh, holiday all around the table and you're sharing a meal for a very important family holiday. Each context is going to be a little different, and so you have to adapt. And that's the mark of a true professional. You adapt accordingly. Change. Those that say, I'm just going to blast the same thing out to everybody, just gets uh, ignored first, and then uh, they uh, get detested after a while. So in your professional opinion then, what would be the best way? You like my little thumbs up? My like. I like that. Like you button? know, Dan, that's very good. You You're like that? A it's a big thumb. Artist. He got hit with a hammer. But oh, it, okay, that was it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, what's the best way for us today that we can some action plans, some some ideas we can start implementing today to start getting more Facebook likes? 
I would say, why do you want more Facebook likes? I would ask that question initially. Okay, for like for for example, for us on little conversations today, it's to reach more people, to reach a bigger audience. And reaching a bigger audience just because they like you, that means it's a bigger audience. No, reaching a bigger bigger audience. See, we post, and I mean, I mean, here's another debate as well because some people say only post your quotes, your comments. You know, stop posting things from. Uh, you know, Vince Lombardi and stop posting quotes from this person and that person post your stuff. Well, on our Facebook page, and I'm, I'm speaking specifically for Little Conversations today, we post expert videos. So every expert of the week, we post some of their videos on Facebook because we know people like to go to Facebook where they might not surf as much anymore. Yep. So they might not actually go to our site, but they still want to see the videos or, you know, we usually do one at nine, one at 11, one at two. Some days we do one at 10 and one at one, you know, mm -hmm. mix it up a bit so it's not so scheduled. But um, we'd like to get more Facebook likes because I'd love to have the interaction with people and then uh, the ability to post that on the experts wall as well. So then the expert can start interacting with people because for us anyways, in our business, um, it's very clear that the little conversations a lot of people have in their heads, because I had it. I had it when we first started, where, you know, these experts like yourself, and oh, I'd never be able to call up or send Terry Brock an email and him talk to me. Sure like, you can. <laughs> no, I know. Well, you and I know that now, and it's something I know now, but it's something that, um, okay, I'll take it right back to a couple of years ago. The first time... I spoke with Bob Burke. I was sweating bullets. I mean, Terry, I'm standing here in my office and I am terrified. I'm terrified. In my head, I'm going, who do you think you are to be standing here speaking with this man? He's been on stages speaking to 30, 40, 50,000 people. He's doing everything you want to do. You've read The Go-Giver. You've read The Go-Giver Sells More. You've read Endless Referrals. This guy's an international best-selling author. Why would he want to talk to me? And when I got on the phone with him, I was sweating bullets. He says, Dan, I'm just a guy. Yeah, Bob is a wonderful guy. He's you know, amazing. He's, he's amazing. Yeah. Well, he introduced us. And, yeah, you know, right. I'm just a guy. I'm just a guy. Just don't worry about it. I'm just a guy. So for me, if I could put an expert video up and reach 4,000 people as opposed to, I think we're 171 likes, you know, and I see a lot of the posts that we do and there's, you know, 30, 40 people that saw it, you know, some interaction sometimes, but not all the time. So it tells me something's not right. But is it the fact that those videos aren't right? Or maybe do I link them back to the website where people might be more inclined to, you know, write a comment and say, you know, what did Terry mean by da 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 da? Can I get an explanation on it? And then that's where the interaction comes in, right? Yeah, reaching the lot of people is one way. I found that one of the things we did, like when I was the uh, chief enterprise blogger with Skype, we would take a message that Skype had, and I'd write up, for instance, in the blog, we would write up a story of a new product that Skype had, or a new arrangement or alliance or something, and we would put that out there. And the way we'd do it is we'd say, okay, it's going to go live at say twelve o'clock Eastern time on Tuesday, and so we'd all We'd have everything ready to go. I'd have the, the blog written. I'd shoot the videos. We use Skype like you and I are using today, recording it, getting everything ready to go. It would be out there. And then when 12 o'clock Tuesday hit, we would immediately go out and have it scheduled and so that we would be able to reach on LinkedIn, on Facebook, and on Twitter saying, get information on how to do such and such, show the benefits with a link that goes back, always pointing people back to the blog. And I think that's a good way to do it. But I think today what we want to do is not just concentrate on the likes. Those are good, but really we've got to remember always what matters most is the cash in the bank, you know, making sales and making those sales. Now, of course, there's a linkage to that, but never forget that it's not about getting the likes. It's not about getting the interaction, the comments. Those are important. Those are vital. But always remember uh, going through to business that people are calling up and saying, hey, I saw your video or hey, I saw this or hey, I like this. How can I do business with you? 
And so the combination and the challenge that we have today is you can't go out there in the old way of just saying, hi, I'm wonderful by my stuff and being so obnoxious. We've all seen that guy who does those kind of things. You know, they're doing that. And we go, no, I don't want to do it. We want to have friendly, want to be uh, cordial. We want to be able to be helpful. And yet at the same time, hey, we got uh, food that we got to put on the table. I don't know about in Toronto, but here in Orlando, we go to the grocery store. They really want uh, real dollars. They, they, real do- they don't just say, how many likes do you have on Facebook? You know, and then, well, then that's worth three chickens here at a box of cereal. No, nope, they don't do it that way. So it's a combination. And I think what we've got to do is concentrate on addressing needs that people have addressing where they're hurting, addressing solutions for them. And as we do that, then they will say, yes, I like that. And you really want even more than a like, get their comments. Because with comments, you're finding out more what people really think, how they feel. A like is very easy. Just click on that and it's good. Nothing wrong with that. And uh, we like to get those. Hey, that will help your clout score if a lot of people will like you. It also helps, and I think is even more beneficial when you get comments, and then you follow up on it, and you respond. That's the key. Engage with people so that when they put a comment out there, that you can respond back to them and say, hey, that's a good question you had, Uh, Mary. I think that it could be this or this or this. It's called being a human being, being genuine, being real with people. And that's what social media is all about. And even more so now is it morphs and changes. Because this wonderful environment we have called social media is changing really fast. What worked last year or the year before that is not necessarily going to work today. Awesome, Terry. Thank you so much, my friend. It was an absolute pleasure to actually sit down and have this conversation with you. Absolutely. And Dan, I I want you to know, we really appreciate what you're doing here. And I love your whiteboard and the fact that we can interface and connect with each other. See, the way that you're doing it is wonderful. It's almost as if you and I are together in the same room. We're talking. You've got the whiteboard. And we've invited everyone joining us just uh, to sit down here and and join us, sit in the rafters and sit there in the seats and be able to interface. That's what social media is about. And it's driving us closer and closer as a culture as a world, and I think it's a beautiful thing. We've just got to learn to adapt more to it as it changes and it goes. But it's an honor to be with you, Dan, and always good to see you, my friend. Oh, thanks, Terry. appreciate it so much, my friend. You have a great day, and enjoy, enjoy the warmth in Orlando. Yes, indeed. Thank you. Take care.